In this video, I'll cover the top nine stocks to buy right now, some of which have the potential to double or even triple over the coming years. I'll alternate covering one stock that I already own in my portfolio, followed by a brand new stock that I've researched and I'm considering adding. And spoiler, pretty much every stock that I buy, I cover in that list before I invest. And we'll work our way up to the new stock that I am the most excited about. And at the very end, I'll show you my entire personal stock portfolio. Hopefully this gives you a starting place to start your own research and let's start by diving into my actual Charles Schwab portfolio to show you I'm not making this up. So over the past six months, my portfolio has increased in value by $21,000 or around 16.5% overall. But it hasn't been a smooth ride. There have been ups and downs that entire way. And if we were to look at this only in the most recent couple months, my portfolio is actually down quite a bit over the last three months with a massive drop between early August and late August. And these huge swings of tens of thousands of dollars are kind of just par for the game when you're investing in high growth technology stocks like I tend to invest in. And you have to be a little bit careful with these numbers because Charles Schwab considers money you add or take away as gains or losses. I don't know why. So it can fudge the numbers a little bit. But let's now jump into the first stock that I currently own. Number nine is a cybersecurity stock that is supercharged by AI, CrowdStrike. And this also happens to be one of the best investments that I've ever made. CrowdStrike produces the world's leading AI native cybersecurity platform. I actually invested in them a few years back, made a 300% return and then sold out of the stock. But more recently, I've been buying back in based on their recent performance. I currently own 100 shares of CrowdStrike at a market value of $18.7 thousand dollars. And that is up from my initial investment of 13 and a half thousand by over $5,000 overall. And remember, this doesn't include the 300% gain that I got a few years ago in this stock. This is just a crazily good performing company that continues to carry its weight. CrowdStrike is a leader in cloud native cybersecurity. Traditional security companies are so focused on protecting data centers and computers that are running physically in someone's office. But CrowdStrike instead focuses on cloud native applications, companies that have built their entire infrastructure in the cloud. And they've then combined this using AI technology so that they can proactively recognize threats before they actually impact the business. And this approach has allowed them to mitigate some major cybersecurity attacks in the past. Back in 2019, the SolarWinds cyber attack ended up impacting government agencies like the Department of Defense and major private companies like Microsoft. And while there's been a ton of talk around how you can prevent breaks like this in the future, CrowdStrike actually mitigated this attack for all of their customers, and they launched new tools to actually protect Microsoft services, which is actually pretty funny because Microsoft themselves are one of CrowdStrike's biggest security competitors. And CrowdStrike's out here making tools to make their platform safer. So CrowdStrike's positioned perfectly to take advantage of the continued move toward the cloud and the focus on cybersecurity and AI. So their strategy is good, but on top of that, their earnings numbers look amazing. In their most recent quarter, the company brought in $730 million in revenue, up 36% year over year. That's a company making over $2.5 billion a year that's growing by a third every single year. On top of that, the company is now net income positive and they produce a crazy amount of positive free cash flow, which means they have money to spare to reinvest into the business, to buy back stock, or even to buy up small competitors. This is why this is one of my largest positions overall. But next we have a brand new stock that I've never covered on this channel before. And it's a company that's created over $50 billion in value just this year. That company is AMD. AMD is a chip maker. They're really well known for producing GPUs and CPUs, the basic building blocks of modern computers. Two of AMD's biggest competitors are Nvidia and Intel. Nvidia is super well known for their graphics processing and Intel really well known for their CPU processing. AMD competes with both of them on a very high level. And this this company is basically benefiting from Moore's Law. Moore's Law says that every year computing power will basically double or costs will cut in half. And while we're starting to see the end of Moore's Law start to take effect, we're now seeing these chip makers able to jump into new areas that actually break outside of Moore's Law. Rather than just making chips more efficient or cheaper, they can now make new types of chips that are especially good at specific tasks. For example, making chips that are specifically tailored toward running cloud technologies or machine learning applications or even in cybersecurity tech. And if you've ever read old investing books, companies like Intel were held up as the perfect example of a company with a moat, a company that couldn't really be taken on by competitors. But AMD today is doing just that. Here's a graph of AMD's market share in different areas, including mobile computing, desktops, and servers. Their overall percentage of the x86 market is over 30%. x86 is the type of computer that Windows tends to run on. Now at the same time, things haven't been all smooth sailing for AMD. Earlier this this year,
year, they reported their first actual loss as in negative profit in years, with chip sales down 65%. Well, it's a little odd because even though AMD's stock price is way up, if we look at their earnings, they don't look that great. If we go to their most recent earnings, their revenue is down 18% year over year. Their net income's dropped almost 100%. And the company has negative operating income in the most recent quarter. So what's going on? Well, this is an example of where we need to zoom out a little bit to get a bigger picture. Yes, year to date, the stock is up 61%. But if we zoom out to the last five years, we can see the stock is still down from their peak back in 2021. And all of the rise they've seen so far is just a recovery to get back to the baseline that they were at a few years ago. And it's the same with their earnings. Yes, their net income is down 94% this quarter, but last quarter it was down 117%. So that's actually an improvement. And in other areas like their net change in cash, the company lost a billion dollars two quarters ago. And in their most recent quarter, they made 16 million. So this is basically a recovery play. If you're investing in this stock, you're betting on the fact that they'll be able to build back up to what they had a few years ago. And that demand for chip making is going to increase again. Now, a lot of companies that I invest in are like speedboats. They can quickly maneuver around. But AMD is like an aircraft carrier slowly riding itself. It's not going to fix everything in one quarter or even two. But in the long term, with their recovery, there's a ton of potential for the stock price to increase in value as the stock turns around. Especially considering they're one of only a few chip makers in the world at their scale and they have a near oligopoly in the market. Number seven, we have a brand new stock that I just started investing in a few weeks ago. And let me tell you, if you haven't heard of this stock before, this one's going to be exciting. Clavio is a new stock, which if you're part of my fintech circle investing group, you first heard about this a few weeks back. Clavio is a marketing automation software, which sounds really boring, but it's actually super powerful. If you think of marketing in the online world, it's really dominated by two companies, Google and Facebook. What Clavio has done is found a way to work around that to make their own niche within marketing. Rather than trying to grab eyeballs from these giant platforms, which is basically futile at this point, they focus on the eyeballs that have already been captured. If you've ever received an email that seems to talk about the product that you were just thinking about buying, that could be powered by something like Clavio. They connect their customers across email marketing, SMS, mobile push notifications, and customer written reviews. They use all the data that they have around customers and figure out when is the exact right time to send a message to that customer to get them to buy. And even if you're not a data nerd like I am and this kind of stuff doesn't excite you, what should excite you are the numbers. Clavio reported revenue of $165 million in their most recent quarter, up 51% from what they made just last year, bringing their total revenue to above half a billion dollars for the year. Then layer on top of that, the fact that the company now has over 1,400 customers who spend at least $50,000 a year on their platform. And we're now seeing a company that's blossoming from where it used to be, where some people used to criticize them for being overly reliant on Shopify to drive customers. They now have a ton of large customers on their platform. Now the company is not yet profitable. If we look at their earnings statement with the SEC in both 2021 and 2022, they had negative free cash flow overall, meaning they are burning some cash. But with their incredibly high revenue growth rate, combined with the fact that the company should now have a bunch of cash that they raised when going public, this company is positioned really well to explode in growth over the next couple years. One way we can try to predict if the stock price will go up or down is based on valuation. And since they don't have any profit, we're gonna look at their overall sales instead. Clavio has a price to sales ratio of 13.6, meaning their total market cap is around 13 and a half times higher than their total revenue. Let's compare that to another company in the marketing space, the Trade Desk, which is currently sitting at a price to sales ratio of 22 and a half, roughly. This means that if Clavio is able to obtain just the same multiple as the Trade Desk, they could double their stock price without improving the company whatsoever. And that's not even considering the fact that the Trade Desk is only growing at 23% year over year, while Clavio is growing at more than double that. So based on that potential, I bought 250 shares of Clavio at a value of $8,000, and it's basically flat since I bought it, since I only got it a couple weeks ago. Number six is another stock that I'm investing in that you will have definitely heard of, but you might not have thought about it in this particular way. And if you're interested in learning about more types of stocks like this or seeing the real-time stock trades that I made, you may enjoy joining the FinTech Circle using the link in the description. The FinTech Circle is my private stock investing group where I post real-time trade updates on every stock buy or sell that I make, along with a detailed explanation for why I made the trade. You also get access to an exclusive Stock of the Week stock breakdown, where I will do a private live stream where you can ask questions live, where I'll be analyzing a company's earnings on the call with you. This is one of the best ways to learn 
how to break down a stock, and because these are done live, you get the information way faster than waiting for one of these videos. And if you sign up today, you also get access to our weekly In The Know newsletter, where I will break down the major events happening in the next week that you should know about, so you don't have to spend an hour watching CNBC, and you can get an immediate brain upload of everything that's gonna be happening in the week. On top of that, we have live events once a week where we'll talk about stocks or bring in guest speakers that you can talk to. Plus, you get access to a community of like-minded investors who are all trying to make money by looking at stocks in a similar way. This filters out the 99% of noise that happens on the internet around stocks and lets you save time by focusing in on what's actually important. And you can get access to all of that. My live trade updates, a stock of the week stock breakdown, the ability to ask questions to myself and collaborate with others in the community, plus the bonus in the known newsletter that you get once a week just by signing up using the link at the top of the description. My goal is to build an investing community that actually focuses on making more more money in stocks rather than just hyping up whatever the latest trend is or focusing on things that don't really matter like <coughs> technical analysis. <coughs> so if that sounds interesting to you, hope you join us. And now let's move on to stock number six. Next up, we have Alphabet, AKA Google. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, I already know about Google. But here's the thing, when you're investing in a company this big, analysts are all covering it. Everybody already knows what the fair value of Google is because so many people look at it. But that means in order to make a profit in the stock, you simply have to determine if one part of the business is either overvalued or undervalued enough to move the needle forward. And if you find an area that the market is undervaluing, that's the potential to see the stock price rise. Now, Google's an interesting company because they have their fingers in a ton of different things. And obviously they make the bulk of their money through ad revenue, but we're not gonna be focusing on that part of the business. The area where I see the most potential for Google to get outsized returns is their Google Cloud Platform. The Google Cloud Platform is where companies can build applications and software software on top of Google's infrastructure so that those companies can scale incredibly quickly. It's called a hyperscaler, where I could build an app that's meant for one user that could scale up to support a million users in just a day. And specifically what makes Google special is their focus on AI. Microsoft made a massive partnership with the makers of ChatGPT, OpenAI, and they have exclusive access to use GPT applications on their cloud, which makes some people think that Microsoft is winning the AI race. What they don't account for is just how deep into AI Google has been long before Microsoft. Right on Google's homepage, they link right to their latest generative AI products. And these include things like being able to summarize text in a PDF with a single click, creating your own machine learning models so you're not just using ChatGPT, or even combining different types of AI models. ChatGPT, you can type in text, but what if you could talk via images or via video? Wouldn't it be nice if some company had a massive collection of videos that they could use to train their machine learning models on? Oh wait, Google owns owns YouTube. Google has so much data and so much machine learning expertise that even if in the short term ChatGPT might have jumped them, in the long term, I still see Google catching up and eventually surpassing GPT. They just have a more complete set of products that customers can build on top of. And so if you're building an AI powered company, chances are you're going to build on top of Google Cloud and a percentage of all the money you make will flow back into Google. Now in the short term, you're probably not gonna see this in Google's earnings. A quarter ago, they grew 2.6%. Most recently, they grew 7%, but they're making $18 billion in revenue every single quarter. So it's gonna take a while for generative AI to make a substantial portion of that. But because in the short term, the stock market is a voting machine, and in the long term, it's a weighing machine, I believe that the inevitable weight of Google's AI superiority is going to eventually drive the stock price up. Which leads us to number five, another stock that I own that is riding one of the biggest investing trends of the next decade. Zscaler. Like CrowdStrike, Zscaler is riding the massive wave of cybersecurity in the cloud. I currently own 82 shares of Zscaler at a value of $14,000, and this stock is actually down quite a bit from the 19,000 I originally put in, down around 5,000 overall. And you'll see Charles Schwab gives it a D rating. Of course, it also gave CrowdStrike a D rating, and that one made money. So I don't put a ton of stock into these ratings. And if we look at Zscaler's stock price, they're actually up 55% for the year. The only reason I'm down is because I invested around 2021, around the peak, but I'm very glad that I stayed invested when people were telling me to sell in early 2023, because I would have missed out in $4,000 in gains since that time. So what does Zscaler do? Well, when you think of a traditional security company, they would build a firewall around your network to keep all the bad guys out. The problem is if the bad guys get in, they get access to everything. And with more and more applications running on the cloud and people working remotely, where exactly do you put that firewall? Zscaler solves this by 
using something called zero trust security. So every computer, every application, every person on the network has to authenticate every time they talk to someone else. So even if the bad guy gets into your firewall, they can't do anything once they're there. And what's most important about this is this is the way security is going in the cloud native world. And we can see this showing up in Zscaler's earnings. They grew 50% three quarters ago, 46% last quarter, and in their most recent quarter, they grew 43% off of nearly $2 billion in base revenue. That's a ton of growth at scale. And what's really interesting to me is if we watch this net income number, basically their profits. One year ago, they were losing 68 million then 57 million, then 46 million. And in their most recent quarter, they lost $30 million, which shows that Zscaler is losing less and less money each year. And eventually they're going to become profitable. Now, some investors only care about profit. You see it in the comments on these videos all the time. And so once Zscaler does become profitable, it opens them up to a whole set of new investors who previously wouldn't have considered the stock. And this can potentially bring the company to a higher level of valuation. Because when you have more investors interested in a stock, basically the demand and goes up for the stock. Number four, now we start to get into some serious heavy hitters. Next on our list is Nvidia, the king of riding tech trends. Now Nvidia makes graphics cards, but that doesn't really tell you what they do or why the stock price has increased nearly 200% for the year, tripling in value to a current market cap of over $1 trillion. The thing about Nvidia is you can almost think of them like the billionaire makers. They make the base level hardware that is powering all the tech trends of the last decade. Blockchain runs on GPUs. Metaverse technology requires small, light graphics processing to make something show up on your headset. And AI increasingly is being run using both GPUs and custom chips designed by Nvidia. If you think of an incredibly innovative tech company today, it's hard to find one that isn't using Nvidia at its core. Let's use Tesla as an example. Their self-driving technology is powered in large part by Nvidia AI chips. And with new advances in generative AI and applications like ChatGPT, those are going to likely be running on NVIDIA chips as well. One thing that's really interesting to think about with NVIDIA is the idea of Moore's Law. So I talked about it with AMD. Moore's Law basically says that computers will get faster and faster and cheaper and cheaper every single year. Now we're starting to see companies hit the limits of how much they can actually improve. Chips are just getting so small at this point that you can't really make them any smaller or you're getting down to the scale of atoms. And so while the last 40 years of tech innovation has all been driven by improvements in computers, there's a good chance that the next 50 years of tech innovation will instead be driven by scientific advancements and research using things like quantum computing and inventing new types of materials. So as these improvements are made, there's a good chance that they will work their way into NVIDIA chips and architectures in the future so that they in the future are building chips that don't look anything like what they look like today. Imagine if instead of storing your data on a hard drive or an SSD, it was instead written on a piece of DNA. Now that's kind of a long shot in the future and NVIDIA is not currently doing that, but they are using their chips to accelerate genomic analysis. And so there's no reason to think that Nvidia couldn't be involved in something like that in the future. But then you get to the question of valuation. How much can a trillion dollar company really grow? And aren't they overvalued if they tripled in price in the last year? Well, it's true that the company has tripled in price, but their profit has increased even faster. One year ago, the company had net income of $680 million. Then it was 1.4 billion, then it was 2 billion. And in the most recent quarter, they made over $6 billion in profit. 10x what they were making a year ago. And so even though the stock price has increased rapidly, their profit has been increasing even faster. Now, this is a giant company, so I don't really expect them to 3x again from here in the short term, but it is a way to diversify away from just software and into hardware. And on that note, a lot of people criticize these videos for only focusing on tech companies. So there's two things I wanna call out. First of all, I personally don't only invest in tech. I also put the majority of my money into a broad market ETF in my retirement account. I only show my individual stocks in this video. And second, I think defining tech as its own category is becoming less and less useful. Is Apple selling consumer goods really the same thing as Netflix selling pure software? And is Amazon really a tech company or are they a logistics company that just makes really good use of tech? In 20 years, I don't think there's going to be such a thing as a tech company. You'll have companies that look like tech companies of today and everyone else will be bankrupt. But on that note, that leads us to stock number three, a more pure play software 
software company, Monday.com. Monday.com is a platform designed around working. They call their platform WorkOS, basically the operating system that runs your workday. And they're used by some massive customers, including Caterpillar, Canva, Coca-Cola, Lionsgate, and even Universal Music Group. Monday.com is one of those pieces of tech that once a company starts using it, it makes them so much more money from increased efficiency that they pretty much stay with the platform forever and spend more and more money on it each year. The company's net dollar retention rate was over 110%, meaning that for every dollar a customer spends this year, they can expect that same customer to spend $1.10 next year. That's built in growth without even needing to sell a single new customer. And for their larger customers with more than 10 users, that number jumps to $1.20 every single year. The company now has over 1,800 customers who spend over $50,000 in annual recurring revenue. And here's why that's a big deal. Imagine if I'm selling a physical goods product. Let's say it's hamburgers. I sell $100 million worth of hamburgers this year. Well, to grow 50%, I have to sell $150 million of hamburgers next year. That's a tall order. It requires building up the company. But with annual recurring revenue, that growth is built in. If I'm monday.com and I sell $100 million in annual recurring revenue this year, if I want to grow 50% next year, I only have to sell 50 million in additional revenue. The 100 million just carries over year to year. This makes annual recurring revenue an engine of growth that operates within the business, which when combined with a high dollar base net expansion rate, means the company just has growth built in even without acquiring new customers. Of course, on top of that, monday.com is getting new customers. They grew their revenue 42% in their most recent quarter. And more impressively, they grew their net change in cash to $51 million, up 460% year over year. Now they are not yet net income positive, but I actually don't think that's a big deal because I think cash is more important than profit. Profit's just an accounting term. Cash is literally the money that is sitting in your account that wasn't there the quarter before. This is money that you can use to buy back the stock price if it drops, to invest in buying competitors, or to just use to build new products. Remember, a company can technically go bankrupt even if they're profitable, but as long as they're making cash, the company is going to stay in business. And by the way, if you've watched this far in the video and haven't subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. I make a new top stocks video every single month talking about new companies and companies that I'm investing in, and you subscribing gets us closer to our goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Right now, 82% of people watching this video aren't subscribed, so if everyone watching just hit the subscribe button now, we would hit that goal by the end of the week. So okay, you got it? Okay, let's move on to the last two stocks. Number two is a tech company out of Southeast Asia that has been quietly killing it while being ignored by many Western investors. Grab Holdings. I know it's not the best name, but keep with me for a second. For a lot of people in the West, the concept of Grab might be a little bit strange. They are the everything app. They can deliver groceries to your home. They can help you learn. You can go to them for financial services and taking out a loan. And you can even use them for fraud management. These everything apps are really popular in China, for example, where WeChat is used by pretty much everybody in the country, where you basically take all the different apps on your phone and put them together into one super app. The thing about these companies is they're really hard to get off the ground because you have to convince people to bring in each of their different use cases onto your app. Once you have them on your app, using you for finance, for insurance, for ride hailing, for delivering groceries, that user is probably not gonna leave you anytime soon, which is probably why this company that's making over $2 billion a year, four times their quarterly revenue, is growing at 76.6% year over year while improving their net income by 75% in their most recent quarter. Similar to Zscaler, this is a company that's not yet profitable, but if we just look at their net income number, three quarters ago, it was negative 386, then it was negative 244, then it was just over negative 100. The path here to profitability is super clear, and this is a company that's growing at an unprecedented rate. Because this company is becoming so embedded into the countries that it's moving into, and they offer so many different services, their business model is really simple. They have a bunch of users on their app, they just have to develop the next service, make the service better than their competitors, and then deploy it onto their app. And this will eventually create a flywheel effect, where the more users they have, the more valuable it is, until eventually everybody moves into their single app. Their only real potential competition in this space is from other large companies like a WeChat moving in. And so that is an area that I'm going to be watching. But looking at their numbers and their overall product, the stock price potential here is super high, especially considering that unlike a lot of Western tech stocks, the stock is basically flat for the past year. But now we get to the last stock on my list, which is a company that I've been investing in for a few years that still manages to surprise me with their pace of innovation and launch 
launching new products. Cloudflare. Cloudflare is developing the connectivity cloud, basically connecting people, applications, and computers all around the world to each other. Now, Cloudflare started out just hosting people's websites and building firewalls around them to keep them safe. But then they realized if they're analyzing all this traffic for bad actors, they can also analyze that traffic for good actors and optimize the experience. So they moved from just focusing on security to starting to focus on speed and moving faster. Then they continually reinvested in lowering the cost and giving customers more control over their systems. Today, Cloudflare has managed to build themselves into an actual cloud company that's competing with the likes of Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, something that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. And this continued focus on innovation and launching new products is one of the reasons Cloudflare has been growing so quickly. They're now a leader in web application and API protection, a leader in enterprise email security, and a leader in zero trust network access, a market that they only entered around two years ago. And at this point, 30% of the Fortune 100 rely on Cloudflare in some form. And if we look at the company's numbers, they look pretty good too. 95% of internet users in the world are within 50 milliseconds of Cloudflare's network. They have incredibly high gap gross margins of 76% with a compound annual growth rate of 48% over the last five years. Not only that, but the company has said that they will 5X their revenue over the next five years, which is lower than 50% growth year over year, but it's still incredibly good for a company of this size. So as Cloudflare continues on their mission to basically build the next version of the internet, Cloudflare still has a ton of potential growth in front of them and they're still executing at scale. I currently have 162 shares in this company worth around $10,000 and I've bought and sold this company so much that I'm not totally sure what my gain and loss was overall. But Charles Schwab says it's basically flat, down $400 overall. But the way Charles Schwab calculates this is when you sell at a high amount, it basically removes that. And then when you buy at a low amount, it calculates that back in. So I can tend to underestimate stocks that went up if you sold out and then bought more at a higher price. And I promised that at the end, I would show you my entire stock portfolio. So here it is on screen. You can screenshot it if you want, or you can just join my FinTech Circle Investing Group, where you can get even more stock updates just like this, but a little bit more interactive. And you can hear my investing decisions in basically real time as they make them. Just click the link at the top of the description to join, and I'll see you next time.